With my dry point plate finished, I'm ready to start printing. I degreased my plate with Dawn dish soap and rinsed very well with water. I have my plates laid out to the left in my work surface where I'm going to be applying the uh, printing inks to the plates. My table surface is covered with PETG plates and any non-absorbent surface such as mylar or glass would work equally well. My table surface is white, so it's very easy to see the colors ink that I'm mixing, but if you're working on top of a color table surface, I recommend sliding underneath your PETG or glass slab a piece of drawing paper, white drawing paper, and that'll make it much easier to see the colors of inks that you're mixing. Towards the top of my inking slab, I have the raw colors right out of the canister. I have extender base, white, black, yellow, cyan, magenta, and then I also have some Caligo Safe Wash Oil that I'm mixing in with the Caligo Safe Wash Relief inks to lower the viscosity to make them a little bit looser and more pliable for intaglio printing. As you're mixing the inks, you'll begin by adding the Safe Wash Oil to all of your raw colors until they're all about the same viscosity. And one way to check viscosity is by checking to see how long of an unbroken string of ink you can get when you lift the ink up with the palette knife. And here you can see that the ink is starting to become fairly loose. I'm able to get probably a four to six inch line of unbroken ink when I lift up the palette knife and allow the ink to drip off of the knife. It's important that the viscosity of the inks are all the same so that they work together and blend together and you don't have any ink rejection taking place. In addition to my dry point plate, I have prepared a piece of blank PETG that's already degreased, and it's cut to the exact same size as the dry point plate. And I marked the lower left-hand corner on the back with a small piece of drafting tape, because this is the orientation that they stack up very nicely on top of one another. I'm going to use this PETG plate to apply ink in a painterly fashion to block in some color field that will end up printing behind the main image here, the key image with the dry point. In addition, I plan to print a variable edition. So I also cut some paper stencils. These paper stencils can be used in multiple ways. Notice how I have the entire composition blocked out with the paper stencil. So I kept all of the positive and negative shapes that were cut. The uninked stencil can be placed on top of an inked surface and this will block the ink and allow whatever color is underneath to show through. So for instance, if I were printing this with blue onto a white piece of paper, the top portion would remain white and the only portion that would transfer to the paper would be the bottom portion below. I can also take this textured paper and relief roll it with different colors of ink. And this will allow the texture of the paper then to transfer to my printing paper through the printing press. This will allow me to really experiment with how I can use this dry point plate as a starting point to create my image. With intaglio printing, I like to think that it's about 70% what's in the plate and about 30% how you print it. Let's begin. Next to my palette with all of my inks, I have laid out additional tools that will be helpful as I'm wiping my intaglio plate. I have some Q-tips. Some extra felt squares that can be used as daubers to soften it transition colors. Inking cards, both um, a Bondo putty applicator, as well as cut map board squares. Cut tissue paper, that'll be really good to paper wipe at the end to re reduce plate tone in areas where I want to brighten up the whites. A square of cotton fabric from an old cut up t-shirt that'll be really nice to use to wipe the edges of the plates or if I want to fully clean a portion of the plate to bring it back to pure white. The main tool I'll be using to wipe my plate is called tarlatan, and this is starch cheesecloth. I form a puff with the tarlatan by folding the edges in and holding the back end so it becomes almost like a, a dauber. And you can see how it forms a shape very similar to the top of a muffin and what this is going to do is allow me to have a surface that is semi-absorbent that will allow me to very gently skim the surface of the plate. With dry point printing, it's the recessed areas of the plate as well as any of the rough areas that are going to hold the ink. 
the smooth areas and the higher areas of the plate will end up wiped and clean. And now to begin inking. There are a few different options when it comes to inking up your dry point plate. You're welcome to ink all the same color, or I'm going to do what's called a la poupe printing. And that means I'm going to be applying multiple colors of ink to my plate simultaneously. When I'm carding on the ink, I'm trying to use very light pressure because the burrs of the plate are very fragile and I don't want to accidentally crush the burrs. After you finish carding ink onto the plate, you want to try to remove as much of the ink as you can before you move to the tarlatan. So using a clean inking card, I'm going to use gentle pressure to try to get some of the excess ink off. And if you're printing a la poupe, you'll want to wipe from the light values into the darker values. From there, I'm going to start wiping using my tarlatan. For this, I'd like to move my plate onto a piece of newsprint so that as I'm wiping, I'm able to clean the tarlatan puff onto the newsprint. And with this, you're going to, once again, grab the puff of tarlatan from the back like a handle so there's a very soft puff of the tarlatan in front. From here, you're going to use very gentle pressure in a down, twisting, up motion. Every five turns or so, you're going to clean the tarlatan on the newsprint. And just like with wiping with the inking card, it's best to wipe from the lighter uh, areas of the plate into the darker areas of the plate. I can see that I have the plate fairly well wiped, and notice how when I first applied ink, I didn't apply ink to the sky. And my reason for that is I'd like to try to wipe the sky in this first print so that it is fairly white, so I'm trying to remove all of the plate tone. I might leave a little bit of plate tone towards the bottom. Also notice how the marks here are very vertical, so when I was finishing with wiping, I was trying to wipe parallel to the marks, so down along the marks to remove more of the ink. Wiping across the marks would have a difficult time removing the ink since the channels that I'm trying to wipe clean are on the back side of the marks themselves. So wiping in the direction of the marks will allow you to achieve lighter spaces between your crosshatch marks. And the last step will be to clean the edges of the plate as much as possible. This will ensure when the plate prints, you won't have a dark line going around the plate in the final print. It's also important to clean off the back of the plate so as you're printing the plate through the press, no ink slides out from underneath the plate onto the paper. Now we're ready to print.